This is Fire675 bringing you a new Skyforge player guide. This video is a beginner's guide to the Lightbinder class. The Lightbinder is one of the three starting classes in the game, and you can switch to any of the classes you own at any time while you're not in combat. The Lightbinder is a sport type class, but like any of the classes, it does enough damage to make solo play possible. Your first possible mission as a new Lightbinder is on Dankit Island where you can get a feel of how the characters play and how to follow the mini-map and fulfill the mission subquests. You start with four abilities, but as you progress through the first mission you will be automatically upgraded, earning a new ability two more times. So let's start and look at the first four abilities now. Hit the I button to open up your abilities page. The first ability is bound to your mouse left click. This is called Pulsating Flare. It's an instant cast ability that uses no light energy and is bound only by the global cooldown on all abilities. This ability is your basic ranged attack. If your target is an enemy, it will deal direct damage. If your target is a friendly target, it will boost that target's next attack. If they don't use the boosted damage within 10 seconds, the buff will just fall off. The second ability is bound to your mouse right click. This is called Particle of Light. This ability will do area of effect damage to the target and nearby enemies. This ability costs 400 light energy, but it's an instant cast. This ability is great for attacking groups of swarm enemies designated by the three diamonds above their head. These enemies normally have low hit points, but rely on their numbers to overwhelm their target. A few clicks of this ability will tend to thin out their numbers pretty quickly. The number one ability bound to the one key by default is called Sparks of Anger. This ability does high damage to a single target. It takes 350 light energy, it's an instant cast, and it has no cooldown. Because there's no cooldown, this is your spammable single target damage ability when other abilities are waiting to come back up off their cooldowns. The number two ability is called Unstable Shield. If you have no target or are currently targeting an enemy, this will place a damage absorbing shield around yourself. It will absorb 12.5% of your health worth of damage. But if you target a friendly target, it'll cast the shield on them, protecting them for 25% of your health. The shield will remain for 8 seconds or until the shield has absorbed its limit, and at that time the shield will shatter, dealing AoE damage to nearby enemy targets. This shield is an instant cast, but has a 20 second cooldown and costs 300 light energy. So let's take a look at how these abilities actually work in combat. First let's take a look at your HUD. When you look at your screen, you'll notice two bars at the bottom above your ability hotbar. The red bar is your health, and the blue bar below it is your class energy. Every class calls this bar something different, but for the light binder, it's called light energy. Most abilities discussed above require a certain amount of energy to be used, and so you'll notice that the bar goes down when I use them. It'll refill at a constant rate with no help from me. Remember that your left click attack uses no energy. So use that while you're waiting for your energy to rebuild. Right above the bars, you'll notice a few small empty box frames. These are for some cooldown timers. You'll find the timer for how long your shield will last before exploding, as well as your finisher timer. What's a finisher? Well, I'm glad you asked. When you get an enemy down to low hit points, it puts them in a danger zone that allows any player to execute them. When this option is available to you, you'll see an E icon pop up next to your character. Just hit that button and it'll finish off that low hit point enemy. You can only do this once every 25 seconds though, so if you notice after you use your finisher, there'll be a countdown timer in those small boxes above your health bars now. It'll count down for when it'll be next available to you. A second type of cooldown timer can be found on the abilities themselves. The only ability you start with that has a cooldown timer is your shield. After you activate this ability, notice the icon has a counterclockwise shade counter on it, as well as a number of seconds until it's ready next time. As you progress through these first few submissions, you'll be awarded Sparks of Destruction. I'll show you later what these are actually used for, but the game automatically spends them for you and grants you access to Starstorm and then Burning Stream, which sounds like an STD side effect. Starstorm is bound to your number 3 ability key. It's a single target ability that drops waves of stars on that target's head. It's an instant cast that uses no light energy, but it has a 20 second cooldown. The best thing about this ability is that when you get access to impulse charge, 
which is like a guaranteed crit. It'll crit on every single wave that lands, not just the first wave. So this tends to be a better first shot than, say, Sparks of Anger. Your basic Pulsing Flare attack has a 5% chance of instantly refreshing the cooldown on this skill. So keep an eye and it may be coming up quicker than you think. The last ability you gain as a new Light Binder is Burning Stream. This ability actually modifies your basic attack ability. Instead of just left clicking for your attack, hold down the left click to activate Burning Stream. While you hold down this button, it'll channel a beam of energy at your target, dealing ticking damage to any target in that area. This ability can channel for up to 5 seconds, but it drains light energy pretty quickly, and you remain immobile while you're channeling this. I promised you earlier that I'd explain how the Sparks of Destruction you were awarded translated into new abilities. Well, after you complete this first mission, you'll eventually get to a side mission to visit Flavius, and he'll explain the Ascension Atlas. This is how you modify your character, gain abilities, and access new classes. Press K to access your atlas once he makes it available to you. Each of the classes you own will have their own class atlas, and these are interconnected later in the Grand Atlas after you reach the Path of the Whatever node within each of the starter classes. But let's refocus just on the Lightbinder's atlas. All classes have a starting node, which is where we were at the beginning of the first mission, even though we couldn't see it. Some of the subquests in that mission rewarded you with these red gems. They're called Sparks of Destruction. The game automatically activated the first node with those sparks you were awarded. So this is how you got access to the first Star Storm ability. Later, when you received more sparks, it automatically spent them to grant you the Burning Stream ability. I'll go into more depth and describe the Atlas and Sparks in another guide, but this is basically how it works. So with that, I'll just wrap up this beginner's guide to the Lightbinder. I hope you have found this guide informative, perhaps entertaining. Please do me a favor by liking this video and subscribing to my channel for more Skyforge guides. See you next time. Happy hunting.